The electric plasma jet engine is a futuristic idea that we have recently made a video about. Today, we're going to go more in depth on this concept and how it could affect our world and how we live. Across the world, the aviation industry is responsible for 2.4% of the total carbon dioxide emissions. As travel picks up and air travel continues with its historical upward growth trend, it has been estimated that by 2050, emissions from commercial aircraft travel could triple. And it's more than just carbon dioxide that is the problem as other emissions are produced during flights that have adverse effects on the environment. Here is the part where a flight have a fixed volume or shape and is less dense than the states of liquid and solid. Plasma is composed of positively charged ions and negatively charged electrons that occur naturally during the ionization of molecules at high temperatures or in high electric fields. Plasma makes up a large portion of the universe, making up the stars and the sun. Another example of where plasma is found in nature is lightning. Plasma can also be artificially produced in a laboratory. One example is heating a gas to an extremely high temperature to transform it into a plasma. The use of artificially created plasma is not new. NASA has used this technology as part of an ion propulsion system called NASA Solar Technology Application Readiness, or NSTAR for short. Within this system, ion thrusters help keep satellites in the correct position and propel the spacecraft through the solar system. Due to the ratio of thrust to propellant use, less propellant is required using this technology than would be needed with chemical propulsion. The plasma is created by ionizing the propellant. This is done through negatively charged electrons colliding with a neutral propellant atom, which then releases electrons from the propellant atom and results in a positively charged ion. Overall, this plasma that was created has a zero electric charge due to the proportions of the positive ions and negative electrons. When the positively charged ions accelerate out of the thruster to generate thrust, a separate area called a neutralizer discharges electrons to avoid a buildup of a negative charge within the spacecraft and helps to maintain a balance of the atom charges. This technology helps to reduce costs and extend the operational life of satellites. In past missions, NASA has used ion propulsion systems specifically on the Deep Space One mission that took place from 1998 to 2001. This mission, mainly propelled by ion propulsion, traveled over 163 million miles and completed flybys of the asteroid, Braille, and comet Orly. The name NSTAR technology is currently in use on the Dawn space probe, launched in 2007, and is traveling throughout the solar system orbiting photo planets Vesta and Ceres, located in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. Updated ion thrust technology continues to be developed and improved. The NASA evolutionary Xenon thruster, also known as NEXT, will have three times the power as NSTAR, which will reduce costs and lessen the mission time. Another Another system in the works is Annular Engine, which has the potential to have a higher performance than NEXT, including the power to thrust capacity. One significant difference between the NASA Ion Propulsion System used in space travel and an electric plasma jet engine is the scale. The propulsion forces used in space are so small and are not powerful enough to be used in air transportation. The technology used by NASA incorporates Xenon Plasma, which is unable to be used on Earth as it cannot overcome air friction. 
section. The methods proposed for how the electric plasma jet engine would function is different. The new technology uses injected air and electricity to produce the plasma, not xeon. The concept behind the plasma jet engine is that electricity will convert directly into thrust by utilizing microwaves to generate energy from compressed air that turns into a plasma propulsion. This sounds more like science fiction than reality, but if this technology is able to be scaled up to fly a commercial airplane, then the positive impact on the environment will be huge. In an article published in the journal American Institute of Physics Advances, the prototype design includes a microwave air plasma jet engine thruster using a 2.45 gigahertz microwave ionization chamber to generate the plasma. The air is ionized and creates a low temperature plasma, which then travels through a tube via an air compressor. While in the tube, the plasma will reach a microwave, increasing the temperature and pressure of the plasma and then generating significant thrust. The prototype that the researchers developed can generate 10 newtons of thrust at 400 watts. This article states that using a high-power microwave source or an array of multiple microwave sources in parallel operation with materials resistant to high temperature and pressure, it is possible to construct a high-performance microwave air plasma jet thruster. When the data is scaled up in a linear model, they estimate that the propulsion forces would be comparable to those found on a conventional jet engine. A conventional jet engine works by bringing air in through a fan. The pressure of the air is then increased as it travels through a compressor. The compressed air mixes with fuel which is lit with an electric spark and the gas produced then burns and expands through a nozzle at the back of the engine. The hot air will also travel through the turbine which are blades that rotate. This process is how the engine works to thrust the aircraft forward at high speeds. In a turbojet engine, the air temperature when mixed with fuel ranges from 1100 to 1300 degrees Fahrenheit. The challenge begins when attempting to scale up plasma propulsion technology to be large enough to use on a jet engine as many factors can come into play. The power produced may not scale in a linear manner as was concluded from the data. So is it really comparable to a conventional jet engine? An article from Futurism analyzed the potential of this electric plasma jet engine technology and concluded Included, the technology produces about 28 newtons of thrust per kilowatt of power. The engines in the Airbus A320, a common commercial jet, produce about 220,000 newtons of thrust combined, meaning that a comparably sized jet plane would require more than 7,800 kilowatts. The article went on to further state that, for perspective, that would mean loading an aircraft up with more than 570 Tesla Powerwall 2 units for a single hour of flight an impractical load, especially because the A320's payload could only carry about 130 of the giant battery units. Long story short, no existing battery tech could provide enough juice. This technology is still years away from being implemented in a jet engine, but gives hope to the possibility of reducing the carbon footprint of humans. More research will need to be conducted to determine the ideal materials and construction that would work on a much larger scale as would be required for an aircraft. Do you think that the electric plasma jet engine could one day replace the conventional jet engine? Do you think this plasma technology can be scaled up enough to use on a jet engine? Let us know what you think in the comments below. We hope you enjoyed the video on the technology behind the electric plasma jet engine and how it would work. If you like